What's going on viewer? Corey here. Right now we're going to go over chapter 19 or part 19 out of our lovely book The Master Key System by Charles F. Hannell. And um, before we get started with this, there's a few things that I would like to share. Um, I know over during the last chapter we talked about um, mind in and of itself is nothing but you know, a substance which is able to think and live and move and just be, you know, because when we identify ourselves with certain things, that's when we actually become a part and connect ourselves with that certain thing. But aside from all that, I've been reading uh, You by Charles F. Hannell, and I also went over Mental Chemistry by Charles F. Hannell. I went over chapter, or part 18. It's been over a month already. Um, this whole entire month and a half, I've just kind of been reviewing. You know, I went through this entire book again. And I want to talk a little bit about the mind a little bit more. Okay, so we live in this this ocean of mind substance. Okay, there's this infinite mind which penetrates and permeates every single thing. And the base of this matter is made from the same mind substance as the base of what we are. You know, it comes from the exact same thing, this creation, this intelligence. Okay, this this mind is found to not be not only to be all intelligence, but it is also all substance. That the only difference between me and this organic or me and this rock is that I'm made out of what's called organic mineral. Okay, what I am is more plastic, not as solid as what this rock is, which is why I have the ability to think and I actually grow and move through the years, you know, I'm, I go from childhood to where I am now, as to where this rock could be, this thing could be older than I am, you know, but it's still the same today as it was many, many years ago. But us as organic minerals, we're consistently changing. So this, this infinite mind, this universal intelligence from which all things proceed, okay, it, 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 it thinks itself, but it doesn't think closely into the same way we do, okay, like the, the, thought within this substance creates forms. You know, a thought of the form, a thought of a, uh, kind of like how Wallace D. Waddle says it in um, The Science of Getting Rich, okay? The thought of this of form in this substance produces the form, okay? And, and, and well, Char Charles F. Hannell, he, uh, he brings it up in mental chemistry that, you know, our subconscious mind, the, the mind that is the same in kind of quality as this universal mind that we all come from. Okay, this mind isn't, is, it's, it's much more profound than our own personal consciousness, you know, it's responsible for the growth of our hair, the growth of our nails, the, the, the beating of our hearts, our, our blood flow, you know, the, the, the rebirth of every single cell within our body, you know, because we have trillions of cells within us, and all of these cells are dying by the millions every second, and then there's millions being created every second, you know, keeping your own physical organism alive. So the subconscious mind, we talked, want to go a little bit about exactly how it works, okay, because we have our conscious mind, which we're able to, you know, make choices from, from every second of the day and what we're going to do, then we have the subconscious mind, which is known to be our seat of habit, you know, our, our conscious mind being the will, and then our subconscious being our seat of habit. Because the more we do something, or the more we think about something, the more we say that certain things about something, all that is being impressed upon this subconscious, this mind, okay? And here's an illustration of how we use it in mental chemistry. And we have mental chemistry on our YouTube channel as well. If you haven't um, heard any of it yet, feel free to check it out. It's actually the very first book that I've ever put up. But aside from all that, okay. So we use a demonstration as this cup, okay, imagine this cup being filled with water, okay, and this pen is a spoon, okay. You know when you, when you, um, when you're putting all this motion and force inside of the, the water, eventually, as that water builds up momentum in a circular rotation, you could eventually let go of that spoon, and then the water is going to carry that spoon along with it, okay. That's the example that it uses on how the subconscious mind takes up the impressions that you give it by your own consciousness. And the more we do something, okay, the easier it becomes to do, you know, like after, let's say you want to start being healthier, you know, you start going to the gym, yes, at first it's going to be hard, because now 
you know, you're so used to what you were doing before, you know, it's just a habit. And now when you start to go to the gym, you're starting to go the other way and you're meeting with a lot of resistance. And now you're building another habit, okay? You're taking your subconscious mind and you're putting all these forces into another direction. Okay, that's why it's very, very hard to start anything in the beginning because now you have to take all of this infinite energy that you have within you and redirect it somewhere else. There was also a, a thing I listened to, I can't remember what his name was, but he was a scientist and he was talking about how we're riding on this back of a giant, you know, and he considered the subconscious mind as this giant. And we have the ability to whisper in this giant's ear and tell him where we want to go. And that's exactly what this thing is illustrated as. And then we also want to go over a little about our, our, our uh, the system of nerves, okay? In this book, You, okay, we've, we've went over planetary vibrations, mental vibrations, cosmic vibrations, um, about the planets, okay, the seven planets, and how each one of these seven planets have their own characteristics, okay? And they're, they're sending off vibrations out into the, the ether, or the solar fluid, or this infinite mind, okay? And these vibrations are coming and they're also being in contact with the Earth. That is why we have horoscopes, that is why we have astrology, you know, all these different signs. Me, personally, I'm an Aquarius, and what we going going with these um these seven planets they also have their characteristics being the mutable the the fixed as well as the cardinal signs and then those ones are also with into differentiate into four elements being air water um, earth and fire okay and there are three signs that are develop are differentiated between the four different elements and there are four signs differentiated between the three uh, cardinal characteristics, or like the the cardinal, mutable, and the the, the fix. But um, so our, our sympathetic nervous system. Okay, moving on back to here. Okay, our sympathetic nervous system, which is being the organs of our subconscious mind. Okay, it's so the sympathetic nervous system and the the solar plexus, which is found in a ganglionic mass in the back of our stomach. Okay, this 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 mind is responsible for emotionalizing ourselves, you know, bringing us, adding emotions, adding, con like, being able to connect with things, because a thought is just a thought until you actually emotionalize that thought and bring connection to that thought and vitalize it with life, okay? And this life-giving, you know, process comes from our, our sympathetic nervous system, our solar plexus, or our subconscious mind. And the sympathetic nervous system permeates every single part of our body, okay, it's, it's everywhere. And uh, our conscious mind, our brain and cerebral spinal only penetrates or goes through the voluntary movements of the body or the skeletal muscular system which allows us for the voluntary movements of the body and it's responsible for dealing with the ex external world, you know, like the will, okay. Being able to choose what you're going to do from moment to moment, while the subconscious mind is continuously moving in a rhythmic motion of keeping your heart pumping, of, of keeping the blood going through your veins, of rejuvenating these cells, is what you're saying. But um, we we also go into saying how you know I know I mentioned this before with our seven chakras, okay, our seven main energy centers of the body, okay. These seven centers we are given from the seven planets of the solar system, okay? And we have seven major nerve ganglia through our sympathetic nervous system, okay? And the sympathetic nervous system is the one that's, you know, it's the organ, or the solar plexus and the sympathetic nervous system being the organ of the subconscious mind, which is an exact replica of the universal mind keeping us alive within this body, and it's, it's not conscious of itself, it just works that way, okay? And then this system threw out another system being our conscious mind. Now we have conscious perception. You know, we have the ability to choose and to create and to think like no other creature on this planet. And it's this process of thinking which they in turn give us or which they call the reason why we are able to create in this world because everything is nothing but intelligence. You know, this universe, this all mind, is nothing but intelligence. And back to what I was saying before, these seven 
nerve centers within the sympathetic nervous system respond to the vibrations of the seven planets. You know, and, and like they say, we were created in the in the image of this of God. You know, we were and we, He has given us the ability to create on this planet just as He created the universe. Okay, and I just wanted to share that that really quick before we go over this this part. And um. You know, there, there's still a whole lot to learn and a whole lot that we have been learning. And there's a, a lot to be shared as well. And also, I um, today, I got accepted as a, an ambassador for uh, representing a fitwear. It's called um, um, <laughs> Paragon Fitwear. I, had, yeah, I can't believe I forgot about it for a second. I was completely excited about it the entire day. So I, 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 I got accepted to help represent a, a clothing line, a fitwear line, and it's called a, a, a Paragon Fitwear. And yeah, I'm definitely excited about that. And I don't know if I ever shared it on here, but I even recently started my own business. I know I, I shared it in a few of my other videos. And it's a little bit slow right now. I just recently signed up for this app. It's called a Mind Body app. And I signed up for the business part of the app. You know, I'm I'm still in the middle of setting everything up. I uh, I need to get my um, tax ID so that I'll be able to actually um, sign up for people to be able to pay me through this app. And um, we're definitely excited about that. You know, all these things are just coming together, and I'm even able to sell product that I may be even selling through this 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 app. You know, and even connect my own personal website that I created to it as well. And it's just the fact that, you know, everything just, it, it works out perfectly. and it, it just all comes together. You know, it's, it's definitely a, <laughs> definitely, every day is just a confirmation that, yes, there there is something. There is this power, this energy, this intelligence that is always there, you know, waiting to respond to us. You know, like we've learned through the master key system, as we when we think, we're, we're setting these thought vibrations out into the atmosphere. You know, it comes out in like a form of electricity, you know, because mind is back behind the electrons, and mind is the director of these electrons, and when we think, it is a form of, of like, a, a, like electricity, you know, but it's much more, it's very subtle and it's very fine, you know, and it's traveling along this, this infinite mind, which we all live and move and have our being, you know, and it travels along this substance in a, in a rate of vibration by the principle of vibration or law of vibration. And through the law of attraction, we attract the things to us that are in accordance with, you know, the vibrations that we are releasing. Very, very, you know, very cool. Very cool. So, aside from all that, let's go ahead and, um, let's see what part 19 has in store for us, because it's already been, like, like five, six weeks since we've read part 18. And, uh, yeah, we're definitely excited. So, let us continue, shall we? So, introduction, part 19. Fear is a powerful form of thought. It paralyzes the nerve centers, thus affecting the circulation of the blood. This, in turn, paralyzes the muscular system, so that fear affects the entire being, body, brain, and nerve, physical, mental, and muscular. Because it's a it's a it's a low vibration. It travels at a low frequency. You know, and everything that comes to you in a low frequency is itself a low energy. You know, it's a, a negative energy as to where it was vibrating fast, you know, because you see somebody that's in a, a very happy, excited mood, you could feel their buoyancy, you know, their vibrations, they're just alive, you know, you, you, you see it in them, you know, as to somebody who's not exactly so excited about something, or someone who's, whose energy is drained, or who's in not a great mood, you know, you see it within them, you could feel it from them, like their vibrations, the energy that they're releasing is not comfortable. Especially if you're not on the same wavelength as they are. Because, you know, they say, misery loves its company. So, let us continue. 
Of course, the way to overcome fear is to become conscious of power. What well, is this mysterious vital force which we call power? We do not know, but then neither do we know what electricity is. But we do know that by conforming to the requirements of the law by which electricity is governed, it will be our obedient servant. That it will light our homes, our cities, run our machinery, and serve us in many useful capacities. And so it is with vital force. Although we do not know what it is, and possibly may never know, we do know that it is a primary force which manifests through living bodies, and that by complying with the laws and principles by which it is governed, we can open ourselves to a more abundant inflow of this vital energy, and thus express the highest possible degree of mental, moral, and spiritual efficiency. This part tells a very, tells of a very simple way of developing this vital force. If you put into practice the information outlined in this lesson, you will soon develop the sense of power which has ever been, distinct, ever been the distinguishing mark of a genius. And if you remember what he said, that one of the characteristic marks of a genius was attention, you know, being able to keep your mind focused on one object. Because the subconscious mind, you know, it has, or the conscious mind has the, the tendency to always be jumping from one object to another, you know, when it comes to putting your attention on it. You know, but when you actually take control of that and you be like, hey, we need to keep ourselves focused on this specific thing for this amount of time because of how important it is, okay? That is how you, you, you help cultivate that attention, you know, because the only difference that really, you know, separates somebody who's actually successful in what they're doing and somebody who's not is simply their attention to details, you know, details, body language. You know, what is it that they're saying? You know, how are they how are they moving their hand gestures? You know, these little tiny details that you need to be paying attention to whichever it is that you're going, you know, after because you need to have your mind attended to it. Because if your mind isn't attended to it, then you're just gonna miss it. So, part nineteen. The search for truth is no longer a ha haphazard adventure haphazard, haphazard, okay, adventure, but it is a systematic process and is logical in its operation. Every kind of experience is given a voice in shaping its decision. In seeking the truth, we are seeking ultimate cause. We know that every human experience is an effect. Then, if we may ascertain the cause, and if we shall find that this is, that this cause is one which we can consciously control, the effect of the experience will be within our control as well. Human experience will then no longer be a football of faith. A man will not be a man will not be the child of fortune, but destiny. Fate and fortune will be controlled as readily as a captain controls his ship or an engineer his train. And before we even continue with that, you know, just from what we were reading before, you know, what is this power that we must have in control. You know, we've been learning this whole time that thought is a spiritual activity, you know, that mind and motion is thought, you know, that mind must be the same thing as spirit, you know, and if if thinking is the, the, the secret of all attainment, then maybe when we think and keep our attention on that certain thought, we'll be able to, to, to maintain that within our own lives, you know, and like, for example, if there's something you want to do and you're continuously thinking about that thing you want to do and you're always focusing on whatever it is that you want to do and you're always taking action towards whatever it is you want to do, you're going to get there no matter what. It's, 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 it's a law, okay? It's a principle. And as long as you don't give up, you know, we're going to make mistakes along the way, but as long as you don't give up and you keep your mind attended to it and say, okay, it didn't work out this way, maybe if we try it this way, then you're eventually going to get to where you want to go. So what is this power that he is saying that when we control, that it's going to help us control our destiny? Well, if it, if thinking is the one, if it's the one great cause of things, then it must be simply the fact that we need to control our thinking process. All things are finally, all things are finally resolved into the same element, and as they are thus translatable one into another, they must ever be in relation and may never be in opposition to one another. And this same element, the infinite mind, is universal intelligence from which everything proceeds. In the physical world, there are innumerable contrasts, and these may, these may 
for convenience sake be de designated by distinctive names. There are sizes, colors, shapes, or ends to all things. There is a north pole and a south pole, an inside and an outside, a seen and an unseen, but these expressions merely serve to place extremes in contrast. There are names given to, do, to two different parts of one quantity. The two extremes are relative, they are not separate entities, but are two parts or aspects of the whole. In the mental world we find the same law. We speak of knowledge and ignorance, but ignorance is but a lack of knowledge, and is therefore found to be simply a word to express the absence of knowledge. It has no principle in itself. In the moral world we again find the same law. We speak of good and evil, but good is in reality something tangible while well, evil is found to be simply a negative condition. Good being a good condition, um, evil being a negative condition, in the absence of good, evil is sometimes thought to be a very real condition, but it has no principle, no vitality, no life. We know this because we can always be destroyed by good, because it can always be destroyed. <laughs> we, sorry, someone opened my door, it kind of caught me off guard. We know this because it can always be destroyed by good, just as truth destroys error and light destroys darkness. So evil vanishes when good appears. There is therefore but one principle in the moral world. We find exactly the same law obtaining in the spiritual world. We speak of mind and matter as two separate entities. But clearer insight makes it evident that there is but one operative principle and that is mind. Mind is the real and the eternal. Matter is forever changing. We know that in aeons of time, a hundred years is but a day. If we stand in any large city and let the eye rest on innumerable large and magnificent buildings, the vast array of moder modern automobiles, cellular telephones, the electric lights, and all the other conveniences of modern civilization, we may remember that not one of them was there just over a century ago. And if we could stand on the same spot in a hundred years from now, in all probability we should find that but few will then few but few of them remained. In the animal kingdom we find the same law of change. The millions and millions of animals come and go. A few years constituting their lifespan. In the plant world the change is still more rapid. Hold on you guys, there's something I want to share with you. Come here. I was going to wait for you to share this, but since he's in here, someone opened the door and they brought him in here. But this little kitten right here, I named him Bond, you know, for James Bond, <laughs> right? But um, the other day, after after school, or, well, I'm not going to school now, but at the college, I was at the college doing research that I graduated and got my, my NASM certificate from. On my way home, the night before, I went to the liquor store and I seen a group of cats. And these group of cats, you know, they're stray cats. And it just reminded me of my old cat, you know, his name was Boomer. He's about 11, 12 years ago, 12 years old. And he died about two and a half years ago. And last, not last night, but that night when I was at the liquor store and I seen all those cats, I was just thinking, you know, I, I really, really would like a cat, you know. And lo and behold, the next day after I do my research and I'm on my way home, a kid coming from high school, he had two kittens. And he didn't, even, he didn't say hi or anything. All he said was, you want one, you know, and... and Right away, I was just like, nice, you know, and, and that got me thinking about everything that we're learning in here, because even in a, a mental chemistry, they're talking about intelligence, how intelligence rules all, you know, and when we think, we are setting out these these vibrations, you know, we're we're sending, we're shooting out our thought forms, our roots into this this energy, this infinite mind from which everything proceeds. And this mind responds to whatever thoughts we are thinking. You know, when people are always in a negative state, bad things are always happening to them. 
because in reality that's what they're creating for themselves even if they're not aware of it you know likewise with us you know as we think you know more positive that's why it's important to think positive and to be positive about everything because we're setting those forces in motion we are releasing that that consciousness substance into the infinite consciousness because that is all we are an individualization of this 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 universal energy you know, and we've been given the power to do all that it was that it has done, you know, and by our thinking process, because thinking being the only activity which the mind possesses, sets these forces in motion. And that's how I ended up getting my kitten. It also brings me to the point of what uh, Wallace D. Waddle says in his book, you know, The Science of Getting Rich. He says, you know, thought. You, you have to think about it, you know. Thinking sets the process in motion, you know. When you think of it, you know, that it comes to you in a form of opportunity, you know. We, don't, we have no idea how it's going to come to us, and we don't need to know how it's going to come to us. But it's going to come to us, you know. It's going to come to us however it needs to come, you know, in perfect synchronicity. And when it does, that's when you actually have the choice, you know. It, is this something I really want? You know, because with with thought you bring things to you. With action you receive them. Just like with the science of getting rich when it comes to material wealth. Okay, with thought you bring the opportunities to you. But you have to give out service. You have to give out. You know, you have to give. You have to act on it in order to receive back in the form of whatever service you provided in the form of money very interesting concept and since he was in here right now I just thought I'd share that with you guys and if he's meowing please don't um, mind him we're gonna do our best too to try to keep our mind focused on what's happening here but you know anyway let us continue so let's go ahead and start from paragraph 10 again okay mind mind is the real and the eternal matter is forever changing and we know that in the aeons of time, a hundred years is but as a day. If we stand in any large city and let the eye rest on the innumerable large and magnificent buildings, the vast array of modern automobiles, cellular telephones, the electric lights, and all other conveniences of modern civilization, we may, we may remember that not one of them was there just over a century ago. And if we could stand on the same spot in a hundred years from now, in all probability, we should find that but few of them remained. Because a hundred years from now, it's going to be an entirely new world, entirely new people, entirely new thoughts, you know, thinking, a society that thinks differently. In the animal kingdom, we find the same law of change. The millions and millions of animals come and go, a few years constituting their lifespan. In the plant world, the change is still more rapid. Many plants and nearly all grasses come and go in a single year. When we pass to the inorganic, we expect to find something more substantial. But as we gaze on the apparently solid content, we are told that it arose from the ocean. We see the giant mountain and we are told that the place where it, would, where it now stands was once a lake. And as we stand in awe before the great cliffs of the Yosemite Valley, we can easily trace the path we can easily trace the path of the glaciers which carried all before them. And we could also easily bring this back to, you know, we live on the this planet is nothing but a ball of water. You know, and within the core of this planet, you know, all that molten hot rock and lava, you know, is because of this these these what is that word I'm looking like plate tectonics? You know, the this this volcanic opening from this this molten hot stuff that comes from the core of the earth, it comes through the ocean, okay, and the, the ocean water cools it down, and that's what forms a rock. And over millions and millions and millions of years, as these eruptions just continually took place, all that ended up forming all of the continents, all of the rock, all the, all the dirt, you know, all this and that. And that's, that's, you know, even us ourselves, we could not come from anywhere else other than the ocean. You know, our physical body is made of 70, 80 percent water. So, let's continue. We're in the presence of continual change, 
And we know that this change is but the evolution of the universal mind, the grand process whereby all things are continually being created anew. And remember what we were saying earlier about the thought within this universal mind creates the form. You know, like all this, what it, every everything that this cat is, you know, is being held together by this universal mind that differentiated itself in that form. You know, likewise with us. The only difference between us and that cat is simply because we manifest more intelligence through our conscious portion of our mind. Okay, it's given us the ability to choose. It's given us the power to think. You know, think on a, a scale higher than this cat could think. You know, very, very, very interesting. And, and, and the thought in this universal mind creates the form, while the thought of the individual expresses itself within that form. So, where were we? So the grand process where all things are continually being created anew, and we come to know that matter is but a form which mind takes, and is therefore simply a condition. Matter has no principle, mind is the only principle. We have then come to know that mind is the only principle which is operative in the physical, mental, moral, and spiritual world. We also know that mind is static, mind at rest. We also know that the ability of the individual to think is his ability to act upon the universal mind and convert it into dynamic mind or mind in motion. In order to do this, fuel must be applied in the form of food, for man cannot think without eating, and so we find that even a spiritual activity such as thinking cannot be converted into sources of pleasure and profit except by making use of material means. It requires energy of some kind to collect the electricity and convert it into a dynamic power. It requires the rays of the sun to give the necessary energy to sustain plant life. So it also requires energy in the form of food to enable the individual to think and thereby act upon the universal mind. It's very interesting that he says that too because we learned in our NASM class that carbs you know, carbs being the body's main source of energy, that the whole entire mental process lies like 70% upon these carbs. You know, 70% of our mental processes come from eating carbs, along with, you know, every other action that we perform within the body, okay? It, it, it involves carbs, carbohydrates, which is why health and wellness is so important, because the whole physical body and the mind rests upon it. You may know that thought constantly, eternally is taking form, is forever seeking expression, or you may not, but the fact remains that if your thought is powerful, constructive, and positive, this will be plainly evident in the state of your health, your business, and your environment. If your thought is weak, critical, destructive, and negative generally, it will manifest in your body as fear, worry, and nervousness, in your finance as lack and limitation, and in discordant conditions in your environment. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. All wealth is the offspring of power. Possessions are of value only as they confer power. Events are significant only as they effect power. All things represent certain forms and degrees of power. A knowledge of cause and effect as shown by the laws governing steam, electricity, chemical affinity, and gravitation enables men to plan courageously and to execute fearlessly. These laws are called natural laws because they govern the physical world, but all power is not physical power. There is also mental power, there is moral power, and spiritual power. What are our schools, our universities, but mental powerhouses, places where mental power is being developed? As there are many mighty powerhouses for the application of power to ponderous machinery, whereby raw material is collected and converted into the necessities and comforts of life, so the mental powerhouses collect the raw material and cultivate the, and develop it into a power which is infinitely superior to all forces of nature, marvelous though it may be. What is this raw material which is being collected in these thousands of mental powerhouses all over the world and developed into a power which is evidently controlling every other power. It is static form. In its static form, it is mind. In its dynamic form, it is 
thoughts, like we were talking about earlier. Thoughts being the thing which will enable us, which will enable us to create our life, to 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 make our destiny, to be the captain of our own ship, the master of our own personal soul, you know, our own individual spark of consciousness. Okay. This power is superior because it exists on a higher plane, because it has enabled man to discover the law by which these wonderful forces of nature could be harnessed and made to do the work of hundreds and thousands of men. It has enabled man to discover laws whereby time and space have been annihilated and the law of gravitation overcome. Thought is a vital force or energy which is being developed and which has produced such startling results in the last half century as to bring about a world with which would be absolutely inconceivable to a man existing only 50 or even 25 years ago. If such results have been secured by organizing these mental powerhouses in 50 years, what may not be expected in another 50 years? You know, imagine what could happen in another 50 years if people were actually, you know, taking the time to learn this information about themselves. You know, you and me, you know, imagine what we could do 50 years from now if we continue to, to just keep learning what we need to learn, to keep applying these principles and to keep spreading this knowledge out to people that need it. You know, everybody needs this. You know, everybody needs to know this about themselves, the power that they have, you know, and the ability to create whatever they want to create. Because when we live in a world where everybody's doing what they want to do, you know, everybody's going to be happier, everything's going to be more harmonious. Place, places of power will be more in a harmonious state, you know, more of a positive environment to be in. The substance from which all things are created is infinite in quantity. We know that light travels at a rate of 186,000 miles per second, and we know that there are stars so remote that it takes light 2,000 years to reach us, and we know that such stars that such stars exist in all parts of the heaven. We know too that this light comes in waves, and that in, if the ether on which they these travel, that these waves travel, waves being you know the vibration, the frequency, was not continuous the light would fail to reach us. If this mind wasn't stable, if this mind wasn't static, if this energy wasn't between me and you, then my, my the words I speak, the vibrations I'm creating with my Vasudha Chakra, you know, my throat, and as I speak, it's, you know, my, my, the sound, the vibrations I'm creating is traveling along this mind, this ether. Because if this mind wasn't there, you wouldn't be able to hear a word I'm saying, let alone we wouldn't even exist. Okay. We can then only come to the conclusion that this substance, or ether, or raw material, is universally present. And then, how then does it manifest in form? In electrical science, a battery is formed by connecting the opposite poles of zinc and copper, which causes a current to flow from one to the other, and so provides energy. This same process is repeated in respect to every polarity, and as all form simply depends upon the rate of vibration and consequent relations of atoms to each other, if we wish to change the form of manifestation, we must change the polarity. This is the principle of causation, and we have, we we have our own personal magnetism, our own personal force of energy, you know, our, our aura, our, mag our own personal magnetic field, our personal polarity, you know, and when we change this polarity, we change our feelings, we change the way we, we feel, we change how we think, you know, it's changing the atoms, the chemistry within our own body, you know, because as you think, if you're thinking negative thoughts, you're releasing nothing but cortisol in your bloodstream, you know, that's known as a, the stress hormone which gets into your bloodstream and makes its way to every cell of your body, making you feel bad. As to where you were thinking happy thoughts, you'd be releasing serotonin in your own bloodstream, getting into the bloodstream, making its way to every cell of your body, making you feel good and wonderful and better. It's very interesting because it's also the physical manifestation within the body as well as sending out that energy into the universal mind. And this is the principle of causation. For your exercise this week, concentrate and use the word, and when I use the word concentrate, I mean all that the word implies. 
become so absorbed in the object of your thought that you are conscious of nothing else. And do this a few minutes every day. You take the necessary time to eat in order that the body may be nourished. Why not, the, why not take the time to assimilate your mental food, your thoughts? Remember what he's saying concentration is, okay? When we concentrate, okay, keep our mind focused, you know, keep our mind attended to one thing at a time. We're, we're not only impressing our subconscious mind with that thought or that image that we have, but we're also setting our brain cells into activity, you know, the physical manifestation within the body. You're setting your brain cells into activity and they group themselves in accordance with the nature of your own thinking, you know, because when you're thinking something for a certain amount of time, over time it's going to become easier because not only do you create that neural pathway becoming your habitual way of thinking, you also impress it within your subconscious, the seat of habit. Let the thought rest on the fact that appearances are deceptive. The earth is not flat, neither is it stationary. The sky is not a dome, the sun does not move. The stars are not small specks of light, and matter which was once supposed to be fixed has been found to be in a state of perpetual flux. Try to realize that the day is fast approaching. Its dawn is now at hand, when modes of thought and action must be adjusted and rapidly increasing knowledge of the operation of eternal principles. That is the end of part 19, and now we're going to end it with a quote by Mr. Channing, and he quotes, Silent thought is, after all, the mightiest agent in human affairs." End quote. Nice. So, that being said, let's go over part 19, study questions and answers. So question number one, how are extremes placed in contrast? They are designated by distinctive names, such as inside and outside, top and bottom, light and dark, good and bad. Two. Are these separate entities? No, they are parts or aspects of one whole. 3. What is the one creative principle in the physical, mental, and spiritual world? The universal mind, or the eternal energy from which all things proceed. 4. How are we related to this creative principle? By our ability to think. 5. How does this creative principle become operative? Thought is the seed which results in action, and action results in form. Six. Upon what does form depend? Upon the rate of vibration. 7. How may the rate of vibration be changed? By mental action. 8. Upon what does mental action depend? Upon polarity, action and reaction, between the individual and the universal. 9. Does the creative energy originate in the individual or the universal? In the universal, but the universal can manifest only through the individual. They are one. 9, or 10, as we could say, why is the individual necessary? Because the universal is static and requires energy to start it in motion. This is furnished by food, which is converted into energy, which in turn enables the individual to think. When the individual stops eating, he stops thinking, then he can no longer act upon the universal. There is consequently no longer any action or reaction. The universal is then pure mind in static form, or mind at rest. That is the end of part 19 from our lovely book, The Master Key System by Charles F. Hannell. And before, I uh, man, I gotta tell you guys, this guy, his mind is just... Charles F. Hannell. I want to read you a part from you about this guy. A little bit more about Charles F. Hannell. I know I read the introduction of... They had a little bit more about him in the introduction of, of uh, the Master Key System. Oh, I think I passed it. Okay, so he is the founder of the Master Key System. And I believe... I'm not too sure, but I think you might be the last book that he had written. There's still a lot of books that he has that I would really love to get such as New Psychology, Social Science, and, and even um, Cause and Effect. You know, he's written plenty of books, but so far we only have these three. But he is the founder of the Master Key System, author of the New Psychology, which is the second part of Mental Chemistry, Mental Chemistry, and Social Science. He was a member of the American Society for Physical Research, 
the Science League of America, and even the Authors League of America. This guy, he, he just... This is a genius. And he, 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 he's, he's sharing his genius with the world through, you know, these books. And he's only one genius that we're going to be reading about and sharing with you guys. There's still, there's still James Allen. You know, I've been listening to his books too. There's, um, I've been reading or listening to an audio. I don't have a copy of it, but an audio called The Eight Pillars of Prosperity. You know, the eight pillars to where it could help you prosper in any stage of life. And the first four pillars he goes over is, well, four, I always do that, put three up. But the first four pillars, and the first pillar is energy. You know, everything is made out of energy. How we're just talking about this, this all mind, this infinite intelligence is nothing but energy. You know, we are this energy in motion, you know, in, in dynamic phase. And wherever we are placing our energies, you know, the more we place our energy in this thing, you know, and then we're obviously going to get more out of it, you know. So energy, we have to have energy. Two, he sets with economy, okay, being able to economize the things that we have, you know, intelligently directing what you have, you know, like your energy, intelligently directing your energy, but also making sure that you're, you're intelligently using your resources, you know, when you, you, you strongly economize both your time and your money, you know, being able to, to plan everything out in the perfect manner so you can go throughout your entire day at 100%. So first is energy, next is economy, third was integrity, you know, staying persistent as it, at it, keeping your persistence going, you know, every single day you get up, do a little bit, you know, do a lot of it, you know, keep putting your energy into that same thing and keep economizing your your materials that you need. And also the, the fourth one being system, okay, you have to have a system because having a system prevents, you know, confusion, it prevents any of that. And when you have so much going on at once, you need a system to help you from, you know, misplacing things or losing things and, and that and whatnot. So the first four pillars that we we got down pretty good was energy, you know, applying your energy in certain areas of your life so it, you could get all that back in that type of form, okay? Two, economy, like intelligently economizing your, 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 your resources, you know, such as time and money, okay, because time we can never get back, so that's definitely something you want to make sure that you're putting, you know, all your efforts into doing and then money, money you could get back, but you know, money's a form money's a form of material power. And the more material power we have, the more of this type of power we will be able to get. And then next there's integrity. Okay, having integrity, doing this doing what you need to do every day to help you get closer to wherever it is you want to go. And then lastly the fourth one, having a system. Okay, so it prevents confusion and everything works in a perfect manner, like a most perfect machine. And those were the first four, there's still the whole other four, and we'll share that other four with you in another time. But those are what we have down so far, and um, with all that being said, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching it with me. Today is the 18th of Sunday, and right now it is 8.26. I started this video around 7.40. So this video was like 46, 47, almost 50 minutes long. So chances are that you made it this far. I really have no idea. But, you know, we still did it anyway, and it's still helping us to grow. And I'm doing all this, so maybe, you know, you see my video from where I was back in November with mental chemistry. That was about 10 months ago to where I am now. And I just hope that inspires you to you know, take the initiative to keep growing yourself, both in mind and in body, because our health is very important. It is just as important. So with that being said, remember our daily affirmations, that we are the lights of the world, you and me, and together we can make a difference. And all in all, I'll see you guys on the other side of the galaxy.